How much would it cost to get a PC capable of running DOS games as well as Windows? Well, I'll tell you, you can get it for under £25, that's about 30 something dollars. That's what I wanted to do in this video. I'll show you what I got. So, I've just got this. This is going to be my new retro PC. I just bought it on eBay. Let's see what's inside. For £25. Right, it is, let's have a look, I'm reading my eBay listing, it's an HP Thin Client, this is it, uh, T620, there's also a T610 I think, I, I'm hovering between those two, um, 1.65 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes RAM, 16 gigabytes SSD, and uh, suitable for retro software i want it really for ms dos but i believe this has got windows xp installed as well as i say it cost me 25 pounds it's got a it's got a mouse and i think that's a stand I'll find out sooner or later and a power supply and uh so i need to find a keyboard and monitor and See if I can get this connected and um, I'll come back and show you how far I got. Okay, so I've got it connected up and this is all running now. Let's have a quick look at what it's got. So on the front you've got your headphone and um, microphone sockets. You've got two uh, USB 2 and two USB 3 ports and the on off button there. On the back we've got a range of things. We've got a couple of display uh, ports there, a couple more uh, USBs, a network connector, a PS2, I've got my uh, mouse connected at the moment. I've actually got a USB keyboard, but you could put in uh, that sort of keyboard there. I've got a VJ connector, um, power, well, it's all ready to go. Oh, I also attached this stand. Now in principle, this stand could be attached to have the unit vertically. In fact, um, somebody had been messing around with this at some point and the, the little screw things that it would attach to were either one was missing and one was bent, but it works fine like this. It has to have uh, free access to the air because there is no fan in this. It's a completely silent unit. If you can hear anything at all, it's my other computers here. This is completely silent. So anyway, I think it's quite small and it's got a good range of uh, ports to connect all kinds of different equipment to. Let me now show you the software uh, that I've got set up. Now, the unit I bought actually has XP, Windows XP already installed. Apparently, this can support up to Windows 10, though I haven't tried that, uh, but it also, Windows XP also runs DOS programs. So I've got Turbo Pascal here and it loads it into a window or uh, which I find more convenient. I can set it to full screen. And now I can run Turbo Pascal DOS program full screen. And uh, let's quit this. In fact, if I wanted to run DOS programs all the time, then what I would do is, uh, let me turn off the computer, restart. Now I've got my USB drive here, my little portable uh, USB disk. When this reboots, the operating system is set up to look first for anything that's bootable in the USB drive. And so now I booted straight into DOS. This is actually a version of, uh, a free version of a DOS compatible operating system, free DOS. You could, of course, put a, a standard Microsoft DOS on if you have one. And now I can, let's go into WordPerfect for DOS, WordPerfect 6.2. And uh, now I'm running WordPerfect 6.2 for DOS. One, the one or two problems I had with this, uh, let's get out of this, the mouse, I had to, for FreeDOS, I installed 
something called, uh, let's see if I can find it here. It's called ctmouse.exe. Let me um, run the editor, DOS editor, file open config.sys. If you're not used to, to DOS, there are two files you'll have to edit quite a bit. One of which is config.sys. Here, for example, I had to put files equals 80 because WordPerfect needed more files. It didn't uh, like having all those. Um, it needs more file handlers. It, it's a, you'd see an error message. And the other thing for the mouse, I needed to edit autoexec.bat. That's the file that runs automatically when the thing loads. And here you can see I put ctmouse that loads the mouse driver. I had to install that separately. ctmouse.exe is a mouse utility which you can find online, just Google for it. Uh, so I had to install ctmouse.exe and I found the mouse speed, the movement of the cursor, mouse cursor to be too fast. So you can tailor that with slash r and some value I won't go through the whole documentation of CT Mouse here, you can find that online, but I found that slash R33 works pretty well for me. So there you are, I've got, uh, I've got DOS, uh, which I can boot from my USB drive. If I take the USB drive out, it boots into Windows XP. Uh, was there anything else I needed to do on this? I think that's, oh, I tried lo loading Windows 3.1 on this PC, I, I have a, a partition on this PC. So Windows is kept in one partition and DOS, an actual version of authentic MS-DOS is in another and I can boot between the two. I won't explain that. If you go to chat GPT or Grok, they will tell you how to partition a disk. Um, that works fine. Windows 3.1 works fine on, on there. On here, it's, um, let me show you. So if I go to Windows, uh, if I just load it by running win, the win command, it bombs out because it's trying to use the expanded or extended version of Windows with access to extra memory. And I don't know why, but it doesn't like it. Something went wrong. So I have to load it win in standard mode slash S. That loads Windows fine, but it doesn't recognize my mouse. Whether that's because I've got a, a USB mouse and I need to configure it for a serial mouse or whether I need to do some extra configuration. I don't know at the moment. Uh, if anybody's got the answer to that, please post it in the comments down below. As I say, I already have a, an existing standard Windows 3.1 installation on my other PC, so that doesn't bother me too much. So anyway, that's what I've got. I've got a £25 uh, computer, boots Windows XP runs DOS software. Uh, I've just plugged in keyboard, mouse and monitor. And I think that's a pretty good bargain for anybody who wants to do anything retro. Uh, I think that's uh, 25 pounds well spent. Now, as I said earlier, the HP T620 isn't the only thin client computer, small uh, silent computer capable of running DOS and uh, Windows. Uh, it's not the only computer capable of running retro games or, as I prefer, retro application software and uh, development programming software. Look on eBay, you can find thin clients capable of doing this from HP, Wise, Fujitsu and other manufacturers. Before you buy it, check what you want it for. If it's for DOS games specifically, do a bit of research on Google or ask ChatGPT or Grok for some information to help you find out whether it's capable of running what you want. Uh, but personally, I must say, I am extremely happy with this little £25 computer that lets me program just like I did back in the 1980s.